Hi everyone. If you're like me, you might have an endless list of cloud flows in Power Automate with no great way of keeping things organized. You can see my list goes on and on and on. And I have in the past used different methods such as organizing my active flows in OneNotes. You can of course use Power Automate's solutions folder structure, but really there is no one solution that may work best for everyone, but I want to present a solution to you today, a, a way that I organize cloud flows and in particular the cloud flows that are act actually active like the ones that are in production and running. And the way that I do that is using SharePoint lists. And I launch and access all, and I access all of my cloud flows, active cloud flows from this SharePoint list. So I have this SharePoint site here, and we're going to walk through creating a SharePoint list so that you can organize your cloud flows there. So on your site homepage, if you click new, you'll see the option for list. You'll get a pop-up. We're going to start with a blank list. And then here is where we will name, give our list a name. We're going to call this our automate flow database. You can give it a description. You don't have to. You can show in site navigation, which means it will appear over here. And then you'll click create. You can see this list already exists. Indeed it does. I've already done this step. It's over here, but it's empty. So we're going to add some stuff. Now, SharePoint lists always give you this, automatically give you this title card. And you can't modify this column in a way that you can when you add a new column. And there's no way to remove this column either. So by default, it's always there. And so what I'm going to do is repurpose this column, not necessarily repurpose it, but I'm going to go to column uh, settings. And you see you have the option to hide this column. So you could do that, but I'm just going to rename it. We're just going to use it as the flow name. So this is just going to be a value where we insert the name of a flow. Uh, my next column, I want a way to access the flow from this SharePoint list. So I'm going to choose a hyperlink option and click next. And the name of this column, we'll call it flow home. This is the URL of the home page of the flow. And type is hyperlink. And you can say require that this column contains information. I'm going to leave that off and click. Yeah. Now here, if we already start adding which you can do at any time. I'm going to hop over to Power Automate and take a look at a few of the flows I have here. In this instance of Power Automate, I don't have as nearly as many flows as I showed you in my other instance, but here, some of these are active, some are not, some are just um, test for testing purposes. But here's one which I have that's actively running. It's an automated cloud flow. So I'm going to go to this home page and then I'm going to copy the name of the flow and then I'll go back to SharePoint and I'll put the name of the flow in here. And now here's where we need our URL. I'll go back to Power Automate to grab that. 
we grab our URL and put it in the URL field. And then the alternative text, I like to not have the URL showing. So I'm going to put the alternative text as the name of the flow. And then we'll click save. Now we have our link so we can access our flow directly from there. Now, I also like to have a column and you saw this in a previous video where I have a column, which is status. And for status column, I make this column a choice column because I'm going to, I'm going to have it be two choices, which is off or on. So status is literally is the flow off or is it on? So status for the description is the flow off or on and then choice choice one is on choice two is off and there is no choice three so i'm going to delete that choice and then i'm going to set the colors so that on is green and off is red and then i'm going to click save now here, there's two ways to edit. I can edit by simply clicking here and clicking edit, or I can edit in grid view, which allows me to edit everything. So if I edit, edit in grid view, I can choose my status of this flow by clicking on or off. This flow is on. In a previous video, you saw that I was triggering um, the turning off of a flow from SharePoint list. So you can see that video on how I did that. Now I like to organize my flows by categories and categories. I'm also going to use a choice and I'm going to click next and categories. So the name of this is category. The name of this column is category. category of the flow. You can have anything be category. It's your, how you wish to organize things. So for example, you might have a type of flows that are admin. You might have type of flows that do certain things such as, um, this one does YouTube related things. Um, another one could be this one does LinkedIn related actions. So you could have multiple choices here. Now, this is where my category for my categories, I might have a flow that falls into multiple categories. So I want to go to more options and then I want to allow multiple selections. So I'm going to toggle that to yes, and then I'm going to click save. And then for this one here, the categories I have would be admin and YouTube. Now I also like to have a column for flow ID, and that's just going to be a regular text column. And flow ID is the actual ID of the flow. So the ID of the flow. We save. If we go over to Power Automate, back to this particular flow, in the URL, we can see up at the top there is after in the URL after where it says flows, there is this ID. That's the flow ID. And the reason that I'm grabbing this is because I'm going to do future things by referencing that flow ID. And it's going, I'm going to create certain flows that are going to reference the details of each row in this database, in this list. And I'm going to use, I'm going to, to, to do actions based on the flow ID. And of course the ultimate goal is that everything in this database is updated automatically. So when you create a new flow and that flow is, for example, turn on, then that flow and the details of that flow will get added to this database. 
and even from this flow, you can do, do things such as turn off and on a flow, stop a flow. Another, another column that we would want to add, if we go to our flow list here, you can see we have type. So I'm going to add that as a choice column. Yeah, type is the flow um, automated. And the other options are instant. I think if we go to new flow, you can see automated cloud flow, instant cloud flow, scheduled cloud flow. So we'll just use those. I don't think I use anything beyond that that I can think of. So we'll go, is the flow automated, instant, or scheduled? And down here, automated, instant, scheduled. And we'll click save. This is a one choice only one. So that's a column with this name already exists. So let's go flow type instead. Save. And then here, this particular flow is an automated one. So we'll select automated for that. Great. Now, there are other details that if we were to go into this flow, so you can get like the date it was created and the date it was modified and you can extract those from here and then pass those to your um, table. So here I'm going to do one more and that's going to be date and time. Date created. The date the flow was created. You can select um, whether or not you want to include the time. And uh, I'm just going to do no. Let's save it. And then this one was created January 31st. So I'm going to select the date. We go back to January 31st and enter our date. So now in a coming video, we will show how to update some of these and we'll do um, a manual push to update fields on these rows so that we can see how that works, how the integration there works. So I hope that you found this video useful. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.